Welcome, Lockdown Workshop. I'm your host, Mark. God, it's naff, isn't it? <laughs> but it keeps the YouTube happy. Um, <clears throat> always explain who you are. So um, we're in the uh, we're in the new workshop again. Uh, it's a little bit cooler. I've got the doors down because uh, there's because uh, the way our property is, uh, our next door neighbours have got. Th uh, well, it's there. The, our garage is on their property, so we have right of access across it. So there's potentially a lot of uh, <coughs> foot traffic in front of the garage doors. It is what it is. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm rather enjoying it in here. Uh, I've got the motorhome outside if I need to make tea and coffee and I need the toilet or anything like that. It's always quite quite pleasant up here, better than the old workshop. Um, good news on that, the builders turned up again the other day and had another look at it, so it sounds like that might be progressing. So who knows, in the next 12 months we might be, uh, we might be sorted out in there. So um, I know I promised you this last week but we've got a bit of an emergency job on. Um, I, I mentioned these last week, we've got some pedals. God the white balance is terrible isn't it? Let me, uh, let me put you over there instead of looking at the window. Is that better? That's a bit better isn't it? Oh, you see me pillar drill. How my tools? Um, so we've got these. Uh, these are my, I think I said this last time, these are my nemesis. These are look pedals. They have beaten me several times. I've had a go at uh, doing these and, and do you know what? I've got a feeling they're going to beat me tonight. But we're going to have a go at it anyway. Uh, I think they are user unserviceable. But I did manage to get a packet of things from uh, Arivo Bearings or something. Um, now they insisted that the, uh, the Kio 2 Max have a double bearing. No, I know they don't because I've took them to pieces and there isn't a double bearing. But I have seen some pictures of an axle that is claims to be for a Kio 2 Max, which is one of these, and it does have a double bearing on it. So I'm wondering whether there was a uh, an improvement or whether or not it's even possible for me to fit these on. This is the worst one of them. So we're going to have a go at that one. And this one is actually not too bad. I flushed it out with brake fluid earlier. And... Uh, um, might, might help the white balance a bit more if I put it on my face, my ugly mush. It's right in the middle of the box now. You can't see the box. I can see the box. It's there. Right. Um, a musty one. Right, so uh, I've checked these bearings. They, they do fit. There is a little bit of play, but in the brand new pedals I felt there's a little bit of play. But that doesn't really matter because they're roller bearings, so it almost doesn't matter because the weight of the outside of the pedal, um, it's spread over quite a bit of load and it's only pushing down on the bit that it needs to push down on. So I'm not too concerned about that. These on the other hand are the ones that we've got to get on there. So um, also getting the roller bearing out of there is going to be a bit of a challenge. Now I think the roller bearing is actually okay in these and it's this bearing here that's uh, that's uh, that one feels terrible. The other one doesn't feel too bad. It's a little bit noisy but it's not too bad. So I'm thinking if I if I take that off and I take that spacer off then I can fit two of these bearings there. It's whether or not they will actually go on the shaft like that. But they do definitely fit. So I think I think we're going to have a go at that. Um, so I need to work out a way of knocking these off. Now I've seen somebody use a puller on them. I haven't got a puller. I might also be able to use a puller to get that out. But I don't really want to attack that yet until I've attacked this. Because these are somebody's pedals. And I've had a look and they're about 130 quid to replace them. And I don't fancy replacing them if I knacker them. So we're going to have a crack at it. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look and see what pulling stuff I have got. My biggest problem is most of it is in a cupboard that's behind the motorbikes and I haven't brought the key up to shift the motorbikes. So I'm just going to pause you there and see what I can get out of the cupboard. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Mental note, need to find a remote control for this camera. Right, um, 
it looks like we don't have uh, a small puller. I thought I had a really small one but I must have dreamt it. So what we're going to have to do is see if we can just fashion something in here where I can I can get under the lip of that bearing and then just sort of um, tap it down gently. So let me just have a quick poke around and see what I can find. Right, let's see how we go with this. Are you focused? Um, right, so I'm going to use a um, a cone spanner. Um, hoping I'm not going to knacker it because these weren't cheap. They're, they're not park tools, but they're next best cheapest thing. Um, it does fit, so we're just going to drop that in there. Just get it as tight as I can so it provides as much support for the uh, the spanner as I can get. And we're just going to. I've got a really really baby. It probably won't be enough. I'm not, I'm not even scared in it with that. Right. That was the would you come along quietly hammer. Right, now we're going to up the empty. We're going to put a bit more force into the, uh, the question now. Now we're up into the I'm not sure you quite heard me category. Ha ha ha! Steel is real. Right, so that looks okay. So these should come off. So again, we'll make sure we put them in the right order. What we can do now is we can now clean all this lot out. So there is a rubber seal in there, but obviously it's not very good. Ugh. I can actually reach that now. The other workshop, I could never bloody reach them, I think. Um, what we might do is uh, just get my uh, thing of universal bands out and see if we can get something to fit in there. I don't know if you can see it. Focus. There is a rubber seal. Um, Oh, it's not what I thought it was. Right, I thought it was an O-ring, but it's not. It's a... Uh, uh, it should be okay. I thought it was a really sloppy O-ring, but it's not. So we've cleaned that out. Um, so we can do this bit with uh, without doing the other bit. So we don't have to invest in, in smacking the other bit together. Um, there is a sleeve inside the main body of the thing that holds the... It's like a cone and it holds the uh, the needle. Can you focus on that? Come on. Yes, yeah, so that's the needle bearing. And that's the new one. So there's one of those inside there. You I don't think you'll be able to see it. Oh you might be oh you can just you can just see it. Right, so in there, that's the top of the needle bearing. That's actually held in by a plastic cone that, that sits inside there. And you've got to get that cone out to get it out. Um, I saw somebody just stick a rag in and went like that and pulled it out. But I think that was obviously for a YouTube because they are, they are really tight. So, yeah, don't believe everything you see on YouTube. Um, now, the only downside to this is I've got to start putting all the grease and crud in this now. Right, so I've got the grease gun out. I've got the, uh, the shit grease. Um, so we will re-grease this. See, it could have been a lot of the grunginess. Some of the grunginess I was feeling was on this. But I, I'll be honest, no, it wasn't. It was the bearing. You could, the, the bearing's terrible. Um, so we'll just drop this back in. I don't think there's any other bits. That sits there on its own. And that sits over the rubber seal. And all the grease that we've just put in has got lost. So we'll just re-smear that over that rubber seal. And then there's some more in there. And that sits like that. Right. 
Now the next one that goes on is this bit here. Now I don't think we're going to put this bit on. I think we are going to miss that bit out and put this bit on because I think this bit is a limit. This will only go on so far. All right. And that looks like it's almost crimped. So this is this suggests to me that these are not supposed to be fixed. Let's have a let's have a feel of this bearing. Oh no, that bearing's horrible. So what we're going to try and do is we are going to try and put two bearings in. On that, we will drive it using that. That's nearly all the way up already. Right, so the best way for me to do this is to just catch that on there. Just gently knock it in. And then we will hit up against there. And I think when we hit that there, that will be in the same place that it would have been in before, he says. feels like I've hit something solid. Now my, ah, right. So that ring actually sat over the top of that one. So I'm, I'm, I'm tipping. I can't fit two bearings in here. Unless, well, we'll try it. We'll see what happens when we shove this in here. If it does up, job's a good one. Ooh, just take two bearings. You just take that out. In fact, you could have put that. We could have put that back in actually, because we can't go over it anyway. So let me just knock these uh, these bearings off again. I'm going to put that that spacer back in because I think that helps protect the bearing. Now I think about it, but the double bearing definitely does fit. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to get it off now, but oh no, that's it. That's how it fits. That's how I got it in there before. Be very gentle because obviously I'm I am forcing against the ball race and you're not supposed to force against the ball race. Right. So we'll put that one back in. Blob of grease as well. So I'll shove that back on there. Oh, that's the shitty old one. Don't put the shitty old ones back on, because that's not good. That would not be cool. See, they 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 go on to a certain extent quite easy. <laughs> right, so now we go back down the rabbit hole again. can tell when you get there because you you hear the changing sound I don't think we're quite there yet that's it you hear that completely different sound right so that's got twice as many bearings on it now
So the reason that I say these are non-serviceable is because the only thing that holds this whole pedal crank on is that um, is that uh, um, mm, come on words. Great, the tool I need is in the end of the arm. I'm not there to reach it. Grr. I've got one in here. It was a 17. 17! Huh. But the 17 is broken. We won't be so lucky. 17, come on. 17. Just one, it was a 17. I don't think it was a 19. Could have been. No, 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 19. That's an 18. That's not going to fit. Neither's that. Nineteen doesn't fit. Right, I don't think this is going to fit. I think I'm bottoming out. I think it is one bearing only. Yeah, I don't think that fits. Back to the drawing board. Knock it out again. And we go again. So it is too wide. I think they've sent the wrong bearings. But I think we can work with what we've got. The problem is that sleeve has got to go down a long way and if it doesn't there's not enough friction to stop the pedal up from coming out. And that's the bit that I'm, I maintain that I don't think these are user serviceable. Which when you think about it for the, the, how much they cost, because they are not cheap pedals, they are dearer than Shimano's. Shimano's you can, you can completely service them, even the Dior's. And they are a much better pedal. I think we might have got that, and that's certainly on further than it was before. The question is, will it fit? Find out in a minute. Aha! Oh, that feels much better. Right, all we've got to do now is decide whether we're going to take that one out at the bottom of there or go with it. Given that I am not detecting any uh, gronkiness from that one now I've put it together, I'm going to leave the needle bearing and we're just going to wallop a load of that in there. I have flushed it out with brake clean which you didn't see on camera so there shouldn't be anything in there. So all we need to do is just tighten that up.
Oh, they feel a million times better. Right, so we'll just do the same for this one. What I will do in the meantime, though, is I will have a word with the people that supplied them and let them know that they've uh, they've sent the wrong bearings. Yeah, there'll be a number on there. We'll be able to get it out. So we'll drop them back into the bag. I will keep them for dye in case she needs them. I did look to buy these bearings, just those those bearings. Go on, focus. That bearing <coughs> was the same price. To buy that individual bearing was the same price as buying the kit with the roller bearings in. So. Um, it, it didn't really matter that we uh, we didn't we didn't use them. Oh come on! This is where I'm slightly hampered because I can't get into that drawer because of the generator that's not been collected. So I'm having a bit of a mare at the moment. While we're there, though, we'll just give that one a quick. Oops, this goes the other way, isn't it? Typical. Tighten that one up. Now let's loosen that one off. So we'll do for the same for this one. Now we've got a process. That's the one I've just done. I can tell because it's covered in grease. A shit ton of grease. Get a bit of grease down there, I think. I'm surprised I've still got this socket wrench. It is absolutely knackered. Right, right. now we're going to take this one off and it should be the same as that one. I should have known because it was the star, the more starred of the star ones. Right then. Same again. Gentle persuasion. So we'll do the same again. We'll give it a really good clean out. Make sure we clean around all the rubber seals and everything. Lift them back up again. Put them back where they're supposed to be. In case they've moved. Yeah, so I suspect what they've done with the new one is they've taken that out and made it smaller. But you can see there's a lot of crap going behind there. Right, that's that one on. Oops, nearly forgot. That's that one on. Now we 
we're just going to drop that on and drop that on. Sure, there probably is a better socket for doing this with than uh, the one I'm using, but hey ho! If there is actually. Yeah. Problem is, is, I need a hole at the back of it, and the, the sockets I could use are all uh, not available. No, they've all got fairly small holes. I think we're stuck with doing it this way, unfortunately. Just knock it off a little bit. Feels okie dokie. Yeah, we did flush that one as well. So we're going to stick a right old gooey dollop up there. And as much on there as I can get away with. And then we're just going to go there. Spin that puppy round. No, nope, they feel okay. They feel better than they did. So I call that a partial success. I call it, given they've kicked my ass twice before and I've tried to do them and I've not been able to find bearing kits, you know, or I've not worked out how to do it. I now know how to do it, but I'm still not convinced it's the right thing. I don't think these are user serviceable. The annoying thing is, to buy a new shaft is about 60 quid from the States plus postage packaging and everything. By the time you've done that, you can actually pick up a set of these for about 100 quid. So then you're into, well, why didn't I just buy um, buy them for 100 quid? I'll just go and buy some bloody Shimano ones. They're way better. They're a lot lighter for starters. Um, and they're serviceable. So I've got a pair that I've had for 10 years and they're on their third set of bearings. And they're only on the third set of bearings because two of those times I actually thought I'd got a, uh, I'd got a bearing failure somewhere else. Um, I'd, I'd got a bearing failure in the pedals but it wasn't. I actually had a bearing failure somewhere else. So uh, there you go. Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to mosey on back down to the uh, the other workshop because um, I've got nowhere to bring Dyer's bike up here and I've got to stick a chain on it um, and I can't be asked to move them. If I could have been asked to move them I would have done. So we're going to decamp now once I've tidied up my mess because as I said I am trying to be a little bit more tidy in here. Um, that said he's still got sockets all over the place. <laughs> the 17 looks bigger than the 18 because it's mangled. It's mangled. Right, uh, pedals. We'll take them down with us. Need that. Sockets back in the box. I'm not even sure that's the original socket for that. I think I broke the original socket uh, driver. We bought some more of these to try and be more tidy because these are the shit ones. Um, but um, in the workshop down there I've got uh, well, I've got a toolkit here so I was going to take some of those and put, take them down there so I've got a full toolkit down there because I don't need them up here it's just taking up drawer space uh, and then there might be a couple of other bits and bobs that I can uh, I can stick on there as well so it'll help, it'll help me reduce my drawer space down there but I'm kind of in limbo again I've moved a whole load of the bike maintenance stuff up here but that means I've just got a skeleton amount down there, so uh, this putting this chain on is going to be interesting because I've got the, the crappier of the two uh, things to do it with down there. But that's it. Uh, right then, I'll turn you off. When you come back, you'll be down there.
Right, let's look at the quick, quick look at the patient. So we're back down in the uh, workshop. We, we've lifted up the floor to have a look and see how deep it is. And I've got to do some more of that just to find out where the rats have been and where the soil pipes are and stuff. But um, hopefully it'll be changing soon. Sorry about the light conditions. Right, so um, this bike here, uh, I actually need to give it a bit of a clean. Uh, the chain's worn on it and the pedal's worn, everything else is fine, it just wants a quick service and a clean up and just get it ready for, for winter season. So I think the first thing we need to do is just is just give it a bath. So let's uh, let's give it a bath. Right, I will just for the record, I will just state I don't clean bikes, but I really don't want to get covered in shit tonight. And that chain looks terrible. So that is why I'm doing it. I'm not cleaning it for any other reason. Let me just state that for the record. Right, let's clean the bike. <coughs> Question is, will it be Wayne Hoover approved? He's the uh, world's leading authority in cleaning bikes. Can be found at mrgrumpy.com. Do you know what? I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Let's just hose it down first, loosen everything up. This is a fairly low pressure system. A little bit more than what you get out of the hose pipe. So you probably can't do this, and I'm trying to keep you dry, which I've appeared to have failed to have done. So clean your eyes out. Haze the bike over once. It gets everything wet. If there's any mud on it, it gets it loose, it gets it moist. Um, but what it does mean is you can see bits like that. There's a lot of grease on the paintwork there. There's a grease on the paintwork there. Obviously there's lots of grease around there. You can see it because of the way it beads up. So that's what I'm going to target with the degreaser next. So just for the record for YouTube, I am not paid by Muckoff. I've not received anything from Muckoff. I have paid for those products. Uh, I'm just giving them a review because I bought them and I thought it'd be interesting. My view of them, I clean. All right, let's be honest, I don't clean a lot of bikes, but I clean a lot of mucky parts. And I, actually, 
Yeah, do you know what? They're all right. Uh, Muckoffs. Okay, bit expensive for the bike cleaner. Uh, the drivetrain cleaner, really good. I would definitely recommend that. It is as good as having a parts washer. Um, so if you haven't got access to a parts washer, one of them is brilliant. Um, you know, if, if the wheel was coming off and the thing was coming off, I'd still put it in a parts washer because I can get right into all the nitty gritty. And then once I've done that, it'd probably go in the ultrasonic as well. Um, but just as a quick rinse off when you get back, that, that's, that's spot on because you know I'm not going to strip it down everything. You're not going to keep taking that on and off all the time. So uh, no, it work, works all right that. Quite pleased with that. Right, let's get back inside. Hey, hey. right. Uh, this is where I've just realised I need a set of link splitters and they're in the garage. Link splitting spanners are in the other garage and I've bent my spring on those too. How am I managed to do that? Right, uh, I might be able to do it using these. It's more than likely they will just slide off though. If I was in the wild I'd have to do this, I'd have to work out where breaking it back out again. Because I ain't going up for them spanglers. Come on, I know you want to go. No, they don't, they definitely do not want to go. Oh, they might have, they might have didier points in. See on the old, uh, on the old SRAM ones, they do actually pop. I've got to be careful I don't get my fingers in the middle of this lot. Your hands covered in this stuff. Half dissolved grease. Right, trying to get it all over the. Uh... Right. Change that it's slackest now. She's there. This is the problem with being split between two sites. So normally I won't be doing this kind of stuff in here because it's mucky. I know I'm going to stick this in my fingers any minute. Any minute I'm going to get the flipping chain breaker on it. I'm going to get the chain breaker on it. Yeah, this one goes. This is one of Planet X's finest pieces of equipment. So it's in the Planet X Holt, uh, Jobsworth toolkit. I don't think I've ever actually used this one. Oh, it goes with a nice pop anyway. I don't need to save the split link. Judging by the state of the chain, it's not worth keeping. 
nearly. See that? Reactions of a flipping cat. Right, you know what we do with these. We keep hold of them and we don't let them disappear. So I've got nowhere to hang it. Ugh, covered in it. Come on, focus. Right, genuine uh, Shimano chain. I can see I'm going to have to uh, dial it out a bit, aren't I, and keep the focus on that because otherwise it's not going to. Uh, it's going to keep trying to focus on that bike at the back of the ring. Uh, this should have a split pin in it somewhere. Sorry, a uh, split link. Quick link. Quick link. They call them quick links. There it is. Quick link. really care that I'm getting covered in grease now given the state my hands are in and I haven't got any brake cleaner down here now because I've taken it all the way up there so I'm going to use some nice fancy stuff right a quick chain measure you know I do this basically I hold it up and I get covered in crap and you all laugh at me that was the uh, the old chain I just dropped on the floor not the new one just in case you were wondering So I find out this chain's longer and not as long as the original. Usually take about four lengths out of these. Alright, so we need to cut it on that one. So that one there. Now I will drop the old one. I'm trying to remember where I put the chain cutter down because the law of sod says I want to put it back in the box. But I did actually. Oh, I can hear chicken wrangling going on outside. Oh, that's a nice noise. Try and do it in camera. It's the colour of my hands. Back in the box. Right, where's the bit we've cut off? Oh, that bit. Yeah. I used to save them. <laughs> Not anymore. Right, where's the writing? Writing to the outside. That's the ways we roll. Make sure we put it the right side of that piece of metal. So I actually did a schoolboy error again last time, which I haven't done for flipping ages. <laughs> Can you hear ducks? Duck. There's only one duck now. We've only got uh, comfy, crispy, uh, crispy dyed. Poor crispy. That was the duck that didn't float. Right, hopefully they'll stay there while I go and find a pair of uh, skizzers or a knife or something with cutting technology. Let's have a knife. Problem is my hands are now that greasy, I can't, I can't grip anything. Uh, there is the right way and the wrong way to put these on, but hopefully there's a little arrow that shows you the direction of travel. The train is travelling that way around, so the little arrow needs to point that way. 
Don't ask me why, I've tried fathoming it out because if you look at the arrow on the other side it's pointing in the wrong direction. Who knows? I thought they only do it so that somebody at some point can go You put that on the wrong way around. You've got that completely and utterly stuck. Right. I can't get that any tighter with this. I need to clean my hands. Right, chains on. I cannot get this linked to uh, parts. So the easiest way to do it is to actually uh, is to bang down on a pedal. So we're going to stick a pedal on now. I don't know if you can see those pedals going in. Not that one though. God, we're 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 quality tonight, aren't we? Uh, eight mil. That looks about an eight mil. Or is that a seven? No, that's an eight. That's an eight. Eight eight mil. This is where it turns out it's not eight mil because they're some because they're horrible look pedals. A million times better though. So if you are caught out in the wild and you've got a dodgy split link, bring it up to the top so it's there. All right, and if you stand on your bike really hard and press down on the pedal, it should snap it into place. So we'll have a go at that on the floor. <coughs> really didn't want to do this. Hey ho. There we go. Did you hear it? That's how you do it in the wild if you don't have one of them. So if you look at it now it should be uh, fully engaged. Wherever it's gone. I must have wound it back. It must have been on the top. There it is. Right, it's fully engaged. That's just how to do it in the wild. That's how we did it before we had the spanners. Right, let's just check the gears are okay now. Sometimes they get out and they get a whoops and get you back up again. Are we back in the room? Yeah. Right, sometimes they get out of sync when you've changed the chain because the chain's tighter so it doesn't take as much to move it. a bit sluggish coming up then. There we go, jobs are done. I'm not cleaning the clock because I just noticed we've got. What's the what? Oh no, I just uh, think, think must have missed a bit there. It's a very matte finish on this. Uh, 
stripping paraphernalia all over the bike. It makes it an absolute nightmare to clean it. Right. I think we're good to go there. I think uh, I think we're going. The pedals just feel amazing now compared to what they did. They're, they're spinning. They weren't even spinning before. So, see how they go. I'm still not convinced uh, after one die that they could potentially detach, but you saw that to give them a fair bit of welly to get them on. So, uh, let's have a quick uh, quick rundown of what we've learned today then. So, Planet X, we think it's a Pro Carbon. It was in for a general service. The bike's fine. I don't need to take things to pieces. Let's just feel everything. Um, where the bearings are good. The only bearings that were bad were the pedals. We fixed those. The chain was on the limit. It needed changing now or within the next month, so you might as well do it now. We've cleaned all the crap off that back derailleur. That looks brilliant. Don't need to oil the chain. It's already got some on it. Um, <laughs> that's worn down. Uh, decent, decent enough bikes. A bit, bit weird though that it's got a 105 uh, derailleur on the front. But an Altegra 6800 on the, the back. And I know it's a 6800 because it hasn't got the clamp on it. So it's got the 7000 front derailleur. So that looks like it's almost been changed. So I don't know when that, that's, uh, that, that was done. So that's a bit weird. Um, 6800 old style Altegra on the back. New style uh, R7000 105 on the front. Shifters are... Uh, 6800 Altegra on the front. Uh, brakes are Altegra 6800, so that's the oddball, but it's the newer one, and the newer one is way better than that, so I suspect they've had the same problem. They have had the same problem. Um, on the Planet X's, they've got a problem with the, the, uh, the cabling, and the cabling is too close when it comes out of the frame to the arm. So it ends up with such a tight angle that when you pull it, you can't get it to move without putting a lot of force on it. So with the old um, Altegras, they were quite high up with a lever that was up there. Um, there's one on the other bike over there. In fact, there isn't because I got rid of it. I, I binned it off and sold it. Yeah, I changed it for the more modern one. Um, so what they what they've done here is obviously to counteract that problem is they've put the new one on. So it it it. it shifts over better so uh, well there you go interesting I don't know why that's rocked over so much virtually no difference between them and the uh, the Altegras anyway apart from the metal they've used is a little bit heavier so uh, yeah jockey wheels again a bit and getting on a bit on uh, on there but they're fine they're, they're still jockeying no all right bikes bikes good I've cleaned it I never clean bikes. We've done a little bit of a product review. Uh, one thing I did notice, a bit crafty, the product I rated quite highly. Uh, I'm going to downgrade it slightly. I came to take the uh, the squirter off so I could tip some of this in the feeder bottle for the thing and you can't get it off. They've, uh, they've put a security thing on there so you can't get it off and refill it, which is a bit naughty. Now the other one, the bike clean, that did come disassembled and you put it on and you can unscrew it. That is not designed to come off. So, um, in the spirit of the lockdown workshop, we just teased that round a bit and popped it off and put it in there. So that's a bit naughty, that. But uh, other than that, good product. Just think that's a bit cheap. Come on, muck off. You pay, you're charging the earth for this stuff anyway. I mean, look at it. It's like radioactive flipping slime. But I filled the other bottle. And you can see I've only taken a bit out of it. So, right. Um, hope that's been useful. It was a bit of a rush job, this. So I know I promised you an outboard motor. And I... And, Looking at the, the stuff on the site, it does appear that the motors and things get more views than the bikes. But the bikes are doing okay. But the bottom line is I can only fix what comes to the workshop. So unless somebody starts sending me motors and stuff, I can't really do motor, anything anything else. So I'm kind of a, a, almost like Musty really. I'm at a whim of what we get. And unlike the States, um, lawnmowers and things like that don't just get parked outside and chucked out every year. People tend to hold on to them. Um, it's not they look after them any better. We've only just started getting ethanol fuel. So next year, after this winter, when everybody's pretty much run, run out of their normal uh, no, no ethanol or low ethanol fuel, next year there's going to be a whole load of uh, absolutely knackered lawnmowers. 
uh, I predict. But we'll see. Uh, we're getting the odd one or two in. Uh, I suspect that's what's up with the outboard. Uh, it's had ethanol fuel in it. So uh, we'll have to have a look at that. Right, but this one can go back. We've done it. We've got it out of the way. I did promise I'd try and get it done tonight so she can have it for the weekend. It is autumn time now, hence uh, I've had to move into the uh, winter safety gear um, with, with socks, Crocs, genuine sport Crocs as well. Look at them. Look at them bad boys. Um, I know white socks. It wasn't planned like that. They were just what I grabbed. Otherwise I'd have been in flip-flops. But it's still warm. We had a, we've just had a ridiculously hot week with like 35 degrees in second week in September. This week we're paying for it a bit. It's about 18 to 20 degrees. Uh, it's been a bit rainy. I think it's going to pick up towards the end of the week. So water temperature where we swim is still still very high for the time of year. It's still about 21, 22 degrees. So uh, it's ridiculous global warming quite obviously because we do keep track of this and this is, has been, last three years have been by far the warmest. Normally first six years we did the swimming we were down to about 12 to 14 degrees by now and some of the swims we did at the end of August in the first four years we were 14 degrees because uh, we were borderline um, for events with wet, even with wetsuits. Anyway right let's get this one back close it up we've done enough weather please uh, like and subscribe don't forget to like people are watching the videos but you're not hitting the like button right please subscribe as well get your mates to subscribe it will help and we'll start looking to do some more stuff once once we get the uh, once we get the the the, the algorithm kicked in and, and things like that at the moment i'm a little bit busy with work and i've also got to get this this place sorted out as well before the winter because i should be working in here I'm, at the moment i'm working from home in a very small space anyway right enough about that boom jobs are good and <laughs> just one more one more one more follow-up uh, i've just had a quick look so to get the prices for the uh, the work i've just done for the parts uh it was it was actually 7.99 for that with the spray thing so that's for one liter that's not bad i think i pay about uh 12 13 pounds for a five litre tub of engine degrease of the gunk stuff so do you know what it's not that bad it's uh, they've come down in price it used to be stupid price i was right about the uh the chain uh drivetrain chain that that was 12.99 so uh for half as much almost twice as much but pretty good stuff you can see what a good job it's done of that so uh if it focuses ever there you go you can see how clean that is and that that was no no, nothing other than the, the cleaner. Anyway, right, we're done now. I'll be honest, I promise.